All right, I'm starting 15 seconds before class because we have a ton to do. Um, first thing, there's, there seems to have been some confusion about the, uh, the essay portion of the exam. But, um, you can, in fact, actually do it at home, right? So you don't have to, you don't have to memorize your, uh, your, your text evidence lines and stuff. So um, everybody, everybody clear on that now? Any other questions about it? Because hopefully we'll have a little bit of time at the end of class to um, talk a little bit more about the exam, but um, I doubt it. Any other questions at all? Meaning of life? No. All right. Um, all right, so that's a um, nice short article for a change, huh? Yeah. Clear, yeah. to the point. It'll, uh, I actually didn't do that on purpose, but it, 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 I was going <laughs> to cancel the whole thing, but I looked at the article and I was like, they can do this. This will take an hour. So, uh, any questions? Yes, sir. What reason, number nine, what reason did Orville give for Shakespeare changing the character of Bangla? He was related to Did you get that? No. He was related to, uh, related to James, who was the king at the time. Yes, sir. Who did Orgel think revised Macbeth after 1614? Is that David? Does anyone know? Somebody else. Just someone not Shakespeare. Yeah, someone not Shakespeare. Uh, 20. Oh, wait, never mind. I answered that. Never mind. All right. <laughs> yeah. How do the witches open up a space for women? Yes, sir. I said that by presenting them as ambiguous in gender, it puts them on equal footing with men. I, don't know I like that. I think that's smarter than I'm smarter than what's in the article, but I'll accept that. <laughs> <laughs> you could tell he was. I, I, what I got from that is that he's a you know he's kind of an old school guy, and then the old school guys during the '80s took a beating from the feminists, so they all had to throw in little little cookies to their feminist colleagues in their article to keep them from jumping on them. <laughs> I have a feeling that was one of those one of those moves. Yeah. Um, why is Lady Macduff as big of a problem as the other women? Yes, sir. She was disruptive. Specify. He couldn't go and serve his king if he was at home taking care of his wife and kids. Yeah, that's the problem is women. It's not necessarily whether they, they're seducing you or, or, or keeping responsibilities on you. <coughs> yes, sir? Um, it, uh, who killed him at the battle historically? I know that it's, it's Malcolm. Mm -hmm. but I, can't, I couldn't quite figure out why Shakespeare did cut to Macduff. I thought something about keeping Malcolm like, as a king sort of clean of the act. But yeah, that was, that was something that the, the article wasn't clear on. It's kind of a, uh, it's kind of a thinker for you. Something like that might be on the test, so it's worth chewing on and trying to figure out a possible reason for that. Yeah. Um, I thought the article said something about like Malcolm was tainted by women, and Macbeth was tainted by women. Mm -hmm. Do you think Macbeth was tainted by women? Well, but Malcolm's not tainted by women, and Macduff is, though, right? He's not. He wasn't a woman born. Oh, uh, uh, okay, okay. I, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I think. I guess that's in there. Yeah. <laughs> It's amazing how you can, everybody reads the same article and nobody reads the same article. <laughs> yeah? Was, the, uh, was it the point making the point that, um, that Malcolm needed someone else to do the dirty work for him while Macbeth was acting on his own? I, th I think that's, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's my interpretation. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to agree with that one. So wait, he just, so he could stay clean here, but so he could do the dirty work? Well, I mean, it was the, um, the uh, kind of what we were talking about in class about how, um, you know, uh, uh, it's, you know, you have three different styles of kingship. There's the independent, you know, kind of rogue Mac Macbeth, and then there's the utterly dependent sort of infantile Duncan, and then there was, there was Malcolm who's savvy, who got other people to do, you know, his, his, his uh, um, killing and stuff for him, but, but was, was controlled knowledge and, and that sort of thing. Yes, sir. So Lady Macbeth was the real heir to the throne, is that right? That historically, yeah. What happened to, so how long did Macbeth actually reign? Like in real life? 
I forget. It was it was it was longer than the. I mean, but how long does he reign in the play? It's it's there's this weird sort of no time that you know, like it could be two days, it could be a year. It's really hard to tell. Yeah. Does that seem right to you guys? Seems right to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. As Queen Victoria said on her wedding night, let's get this over with. <laughs> <laughs> Major difference between performances? Song and dance. What character in the play is King James the descendant of? Historically speaking, who killed Macbeth? Historically speaking, who would rightfully have been the king at the beginning of Macbeth? Uh oh. Who would have been king? Macbeth! <laughs> <laughs> because he's married to Lady Macbeth, yeah. and Lady Macbeth can't be the king. That was, yeah, that was yeah. very was a question. on purpose. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Was that? I guess it must have been tricky if it fooled you. Hmm. Well, I'll see. If most of you got it wrong, then I'll count it. Yeah. No, no, he'd have been king. He would. I mean, it's, it's a qualified king because because uh, um, yeah, you're sort of right but sort of wrong because like the real king would be his son. I'm arguing for point. You got the point. <laughs> I'm a, I'm, I'm kind of a pushover, I guess. Did the historical Macbeth have children? Yes. What makes you feel like a man? Murder. You should try it. <laughs> what happens to Lady Macbeth when she succeeds at making a man of her husband? Yes. When in relation to marriage do Shakespeare's tragedies take place? Uh, why does, uh, see I'm getting married this weekend. Why does Orgel think that our version of Shakespeare's play is the result of more authors than just Shakespeare? Songs performed by the witches, don't they appear as famous yeah. after the play would have been first been performed? Um, I yes. think that's what yeah. it says in there. Yeah, there, there's 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 uh, um, any any sort of any sort of this sort of evidence will be. We actually, can you put your computer away? Thanks. <coughs> we have that uh, no computer policy allegedly in here. Um, why, historically speaking, is the difference between a virginal birth and a cesarean section significant? Because when the C-section happens, you're born by a male surgeon, and when it's a vaginal birth, you're born by a male surgeon. Right. Okay. Marvelous. And then um, the uh, according to you question, obviously, it's going to be across the board. Yes, sir. Yeah, they did have they did have children. Okay. So, um, sort of uh, tried to condense condense a lecture and a half into today. Okay. Yeah, you know, we'll see what happens.
Uh, okay, I want to uh, consider Macbeth's initial reaction at hearing the witch's prophecy, because we're, remember we're going under the uh, overall umbrella question of, are the Macbeths psychotic? Let's take a, let's take a, a, a vote. Everybody close your eyes. <laughs> psychotic? Not psychotic. Ooh, close. Some people voted both ways. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so do we know what psychotic is? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't reflect on consequences or the consciousness. It isn't guilty. Isn't guilty. Right. It doesn't, doesn't acknowledge the, uh, the, the, the personness of others. Yeah. I was going to say they don't know they're doing right or wrong. Clearly, that was wrong. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, look, we'll look at the evidence. All right, so uh, the first thing I want to look at. And then the, the sort of separate question is Macbeth's uh, schizophrenic. His uh, initial reaction at hearing the witch's, quote, prophecy, which is uh, Banquo's speech on page 9, 1, 3, line 51. But if you remember, go ahead and tell me. What's his, what's his initial reaction when he, when, uh, when he hears, according to uh, Banquo's description? He's this quiet. Yeah. That's sort of trouble. But he seems wrapped with all this sort of, you know, that, that uh, which, which Polanski does great things with, right? Because the, the weird thing about uh, uh, Macbeth's asides, you know, uh, um, and, and, and uh, those of you in theater know that the theatrical, con theatrical conventions can go either way with asides. They can sort of, everybody freezes and then you peer into the mind of the, the person thinking. And then, but, but here the kind of more comic thing is, you know, like you peer into the mind of the person thinking and then, you know, the guy who's on stage is like, hey man, what's going on? Where you at? Where you at? You know? <laughs> another, sort of, another sort of comic routine that, that nobody talks about that happens with, with Banquo. So, so what, do you think that, uh, what do you think that he's thinking? So he's, he seems wrapped with all, just to the point where, and, and, and I mean, this seems to have happened before because Banquo's just like, oh, there's Macbeth wrapped again. So let's continue the conversation and wait till he comes back. What, what, what do you think he's thinking? He just he just found out that this these uh these weird these weird bearded ladies uh you know weird in the uh, in the Viking sense have uh, have told him that he's going to be uh, what some sort of thane some sort of king something like this right is that it I don't remember no okay. yeah so um. <laughs> so and then, he, then, then, then then he's wrapped, and then uh, um, so so the uh, uh, does anybody does anybody go to frequent psychics or is anyone a psychic? Better yet, is anyone a psychic? <laughs> uh, um, I really like going to that big psychic fair in Sedona, and then I just uh, I, I just adopt various different you know personalities, and I go and talk to different psychics, and then <laughs> and you know like I can be I can be you know. A, you know, Jed, the uh, computer programmer, that you know, it's, it's uh, uh, and, and and whatever, and and then just getting the different psychic readings. And, uh, they give you like a billion different. Readings. Yeah, they're they're they're. It's not a it's not a very reliable thing. If there's actual genuine psychics out there, then uh, I've never I've never met them. But so uh, you know, at, at bottom, it's just a, a good psychic will just uh, will will pay attention to uh, various cues, and, and and the more of a stereotype you are, the writer they're going to be. But um, and there's ways of there's there's ways of, of 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 prodding you know like I think that you're going to be powerful and then they're like no and it's like well metaphorically and they're like oh <laughs> and then you know just because of uh, just because you know our, our brains are just incredibly stupid we'll uh, we'll pick up what we want to believe and they'll be you know wrong three quarters of the time but you'll just leave with a real sense of, of profound it's like wow she just peered into my soul. <laughs> So, uh, so it's just you know telling people what they want to hear in a framed dramatic way. If you can, if you can uh, uh, elicit, you know, a belief. I, I used to know this parlor trick really well. Let, let's uh, not better not. Yeah, do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, I, it's, it's wasting time. It's uh, um, So usually you can only usually you can only uh, um, it only works with groups of either three or seven for some reason, but um, but but we can give it a try. Um, <laughs> so you've got to, uh, oh, there's no way I'm going to remember, forget it, we'll, we'll do it another time. <laughs> oh, can't, can't do that. <laughs> I, don't, I, just, I don't think I can remember. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> Parlor trick. 
I'll bring it in. I'll bring it in. We'll we'll uh, we'll we'll do it before the midterm. <laughs> but I can uh, I can I can I can uh, I can guess what. It's only, I've only done it with three or seven people. Okay, so pick a number with two digits. All right. Um, uh, they both have to be odd. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they have to be a different size number. And the second one has to be bigger than the first one. Now concentrate really hard. Picture the number in your head. Which it's number? fuzzy. Just concentrate. Everybody concentrate at once. Is it 37? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's because of the three and the seven yeah. people yeah. primed. Well, I didn't get everybody, but I got a lot of you. <laughs> I had some 15s, but um. <laughs> and then also uh, with the uh, also at work, have you ever ever really had a really important decision to make, and then you go to the coin flip? And then what are the two outcomes? So say you say you say say heads, I'm going to uh, go out and party. B, I'm going to study. And you flip the coin, and it lands on heads. What's the what's the reaction? I should study. No, seriously, because mine would be like <laughs> Yay, Jesus sweet. wants me to party. <laughs> <laughs> so heads is heads is to go out and party. No, it's the <laughs> Yeah, and then you, you, you hit tails and you're like, you know what, flipping a coin is a stupid way of making a decision. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and also like with advice, you know, like, like um, I, I, I try to be more distant, but people always used to ask advice me as if I was competent to give advice on anything. And, uh, um, <laughs> but you, know, the, you notice that the, they just go around and keep asking different people for advice and tell the person, tells them what they wanted to hear. And then, you know, like, oh, you're the best friend ever, and, you know, like, so. <laughs> so uh, is, that, is that what's going on with the witches, maybe? Something like that? Yeah. Yeah, uh, so, so did he already have, did he already have the fantasy, probably? Yeah. Because, like, if I was, like, uh, if I was, like, Cliff, I just, I'd jump out of a bush, and he'd never seen me before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you will be the donut king of Wisconsin. <laughs> and then I go running off. <laughs> and then, uh, um, uh, unless you happen to have a fantasy of <laughs> being the donut king of Wisconsin, which, would, and frankly, I, I wouldn't surprise me. Like it's metaphorical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, so, uh, <laughs> so, so, so <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> this is going to be one of those times. All right, so let's go. Let's go look, and then, uh, um, and then so then Ross comes in, and uh, and he's just barely being unwrapped. Ooh, that's funny. I'm R A P T. Um, and then we get this on, on page twelve. The uh, uh, one three one twenty seven. Two truths are told, and happy prologues. The swelling act of the imperial theme. I thank you, gentlemen. The supernatural soliciting cannot be. And so he, so he switches to a side now, right? And then of course comically everybody's watching him be wrapped. And uh, um, so it can't be ill, can't be good. If ill, I'm giving you the commencing of truth. I am thing of card or if good, blah 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 blah. So um, so the 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 thing is, is this is this this uh, uh this feeling of of uh, you know, like your desire. So the the witches identified as desire, and then it, and then at least one of them came true, right? So that's um, that's cool, right? Like if you like wish something and it comes true. Like magically, you can even see a possibility of it. That's cool, right? Right. Um, like, like, why could why could that be a problem? This is a this is a, a theme of a lot of horror movies and stuff, right? So what what's the problem with uh, all of your all of your desires coming true? Well, didn't you say before that if you picture yourself as a loser or something, then all of a sudden you start winning, you can't handle it or something like that? Yeah, that's 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 uh, that's part of it. So it's not matching of the of the um, of the self image to reality. But I think people have that idea of what would make them happy, and when they come to find out the thing they thought would make them happy, and they get it, it doesn't make them happy. They just kind of lose their mind. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and then so it's sort of you know like at least you've got your hopes and dreams to orient you, and then if somebody gives you your hopes and dreams, then you get you get lost, and you've got no reason to live because you still aren't happy. Now what? Maybe yeah. life's natural balancing act is if everything's going well, there's got to be something that kind of brings you down a crash. Sort of. I don't know. 
Okay, just a sort of lurking law of cosmic irony. Cryptic. Yeah. It's still or like like the Midas thing, right? Where it's like you wanted everything you touched to turn to gold, and then you found out you couldn't eat anymore. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking more. These are all these are all uh, uh, completely right, but um, I'm just thinking of like whims and desires. Like uh, how many times do you know? Like I wish that a loved one was dead, or uh, um, or a plane would crash, or you know, in the heat of passion, you know, like yelling at someone um, who cuts me off on the road that I hope your whole family dies slowly of <laughs> something noma, you know, in front of your face, and you know, and then. Um, <laughs> And then, you know, like afterwards, because, you know, like, I, I, I feel like, you know, I mean, I, I might be the only one, I, I, but I feel like I can do a fairly good job of, of uh, monitoring my behavior. But um, so far as monitoring my desires, I think it's a little unreliable. <laughs> and uh, um, if my desires were coming true without me having to put in work and stuff, I think, I think this, uh, this, this, this might be a problem. You know, like uh, um, feeling humiliated, I wish I was dead. Oh, well, there goes your wishing career. <laughs> uh, so, um, like, if you start thinking about it, the, the, and, and there's horror movies about this, especially, you know, like Stephen King milked this, but the, uh, the thought of, of wishes coming true involuntarily can actually be kind of terrifying. You know, like, uh, um, so think, 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 you know, how the way that nightmares are actually, uh, um, are, 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 are actually fantasies, you know, and, uh, um, so just, just if your nightmares come true, that sucks, right? <laughs> nightmare, do you know what nightmare is from? The word, the original nightmare was the, uh, um, the mare was the, uh, it, it's a, uh, you know, they call them uh, sleep paralysis dreams now. It's when you, uh, part of your brain wakes up, and, but you're still, you're still in REM paralysis, and, uh, and it's shallow breathing, so it feels like your chest is being, if anyone had this sort of. It's the worst thing you could ever. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's horrible. and. Uh, but so the nightmare was this, you know, witch-like figure that came and allegedly sat on your chest and you know, brought nightmares. Because the mare was the, the demon painting of it from the yeah. witch. It was horrible. Yeah. If you wake up and you try and move and you can't and you're fully conscious. Yeah, you're even just, if like like if it happens to you once and like you never forget it, it's just it, it's uh, uh happens to me every morning. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 tell you about it. It's funny though. Um, <laughs> why do I get in just this, this, this silly mood thing and then you start giggling you know, or, you know, <laughs> then everything turns into anywho. But, um, so uh, if any of you have, have, have spent any time in the English department here, you are uh, familiar with uh, Freud's uh, short essay of the uncanny. Is anyone familiar with Freud's short essay of the uncanny? So, um, so uh, his, his essay on the, the, the uncanny is, is not really a, a case history. He sort of just thinks about this, this feeling of, of uncanny. You know what uncanny is? What do, what do, what do, what do we just, I want to know the popular, the popular conception of uncanny. So you're disqualified because you're familiar with the essay. You know, what, what's uncanny? Okay, uh, can you give me an example? Are uh, you popping out of a bush telling me I'll be <laughs> <laughs> No, like your mom popping out of a bush and telling you you're going to be the donut king of Wisconsin and then disappearing would be uncanny because it's uh, um, like, like uh, if I think of, if I think of uh, um, Abe and then he calls me, you know, like right after, it's like, whoa, man, I was just thinking about you. That's, that's, that's something that's uncanny, right? But um, ultimately, what, what, what Freud was into is he was, uh, the, the German word for uh, uh, uncanny is unheimlich. And since none of you speak German, I can pronounce it any darn way I want to. <laughs> but um, the, uh, the non-negated, you know, heimlich version of it means, means uh, home and comforty. But if you look at the etymology, it also means unfamiliar and completely alien. So, the, uh, um, so this, is, this is something that, again, horror movies use a lot of. Uh, the idea of, of the zombie loved one, you know, like especially a child, you know, like your, your little daughter is a zombie. This is an uncanny thing. It's completely alien and completely familiar, and this is the thing that really gets you if you're uh, into the, the, the classic. The, the, turns out the world's foremost expert on zombies is a uh, product of our film program. 
It's the product of our film program. The world's foremost expert on zombies. <laughs> a a ten-year track position at, at a, a Utah Southern yeah. Chippewa State. <laughs> 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 The market's tough, man. <laughs> so, so the idea is, it, it, is it, 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 it's uh, um, at, at, at once it's it's familiar, but it's also it's also hidden and, and revealed. So um, the uh, the relevant thing is one of the, when he gets into it, the, the the part of the uncanny that, that I want to talk about here is the the uh, the idea that apparently it's an infantile idea that we're we're controlling the world with our minds. Which is supposedly this narcissistic wish, but um, you know, like uh, when you were a kid, did you ever think that like the moon was following you and you're driving along? And um, I don't know if any of these things are universal, or, or like the Truman Show thing where you feel like the whole world's playing a joke on you. And, um, so these are these uh, narcissistic infantile wishes. And I hope they're not that infantile. The moon's following me, man. <laughs> so. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, like superstitious people. So if you, if you believe in curses, you know, like uh, um, I have a grandma that just freaks out when I, when I curse people. Like, you know, like when I, uh, um, when, I, when I yell that, you know, I hope that somebody, you know, blanks Coke Krzyzewski's daughter to death, you know, like during the, uh, during the uh, March Madness. My, uh, my grandma gets really upset for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Because she thinks that there's this 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 magic of of, of uh, curses and thoughts. So uh, superstitious rituals, um, the force from Star Wars, um, you know, thinking about somebody and they call, etc. Is this idea that your that your brain is really attuned to the uh, to reality and, and, and sort of a, a, a you know like a, a, you know like like serious like really otherwise really smart you know uh, thinkers and scientists. You know, still believe in this. You know, like this. Um, you know about like the uh, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle and the collapse of wave wave functions. You know about this stuff. So, like, so uh, um. <laughs> <Aww. laughs> All right. Well, uh, <laughs> I, you can't stop me. I digress. So the um, but that really, really short version of the uh, wave function is you can't, is, is quanta don't really, um, you know, the, the subatomic particles that, that make atoms, um, they behave however you're testing for them. If you test them to behave like a wave, they behave like a wave, and they have like a, uh, uh, and, and they're just sort of a, a, a sort of a place. But if you make a little, make a little slit in a, uh, in a cardboard box and, and shoot a photon through there, even though it's a wave that sort of exists everywhere, it'll shoot through and like just make a hole. So it's both a wave and a particle depending on how you look at it. And, and then so the idea is once it's the, the uh, wave is, is perceived um, by an observer of he, with human or human-like intelligence, it, um, it, it coalesces into a particle. And then so the idea here is, you know, like when, you, uh, um, when you're from the 60s and you spent a lot of time doing LSD and now you're a neuroscientist, you start thinking, you know what, man? This means that we like build reality when we look at it. <laughs> it's like reality is like a product of my brain, man. And then so these people, you know, publish because you can't I mean, you can't really disprove it, but it's not it's not true. But it's a powerful line of thinking, this 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 magical thinking. So so any time that something happens in the world that reinforces an infantile wish, be suspicious of it. Because it's probably your infantile wish talking. Can anybody move stuff with their brains or their minds? Would be awesome. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna. Uh, this is gonna be a huge thing in the Winter's Tale, but um, yeah. So we can talk more about quantum physics there. So, uh, <laughs> so now we're on, still on page twelve, and then so he's he's wrapped again, right? And then uh, um, so then 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 Macbeth does this aside. If chance will have me king, why? Chance may crown me without my stir. And we remember from our discussion of comedy and chance that that was like his comic outcome, right? That was, that was his chance to make this a comedy. So uh, if you recall um, uh, Lysander and Hermia's memorable exchange about the laws of literary comedy, you remember that? Back to Midsummer Night's Dream. And then so um, uh, the course of true love never did run smooth. So they're reading the fact that there's an obstacle to their love, a sign that it's going to turn out OK. And then so they, uh, you know, they banter back and forth about the laws of comedy, and then and then eventually it's just like all we have to do is wait, and there's going to be some crazy stuff, and then we're going to have a happy ending, 
right? So, so uh, and Macbeth, you know, apparently has read some comedy. He, he thinks about it. It's like, maybe Chance will have me keen. That's uh, interesting. Uh, Friar Lawrence and Romeo and Juliet says the same thing. That's why Romeo and Juliet die, because they don't, they don't just sit there and wait. So uh, is it Friar Lawrence? Yeah. Yeah, and so, so his, his advice is just, hey, just cool out. It'll all blow over. You're in a comedy, man. Chill out. But they don't. And they force it. And so, they, uh, so there's a tragic ending. So, um, so the, uh, the, the sort of the, the idea, the sort of literary convention here is that anything you do to try to interfere with fate will turn out bad. Bless you. <coughs> okay. So now we go to Lady Macbeth's first reaction. Page 15, I think. Yeah. Uh, scene 1, or Act 1, Scene 5. So, um... So he, he uh, sends Lady Macbeth this letter, right? So let's, let's uh, I don't think we need to read it aloud. Um, she's just reading the letter, walking around. Good, good, uh, so he's like, yeah, man, these, these, uh, uh, these really hot bearded chicks came up to me. <laughs> I mean, uh, um, they weren't really hot, but these bearded chicks came up to me and they're like, hey, dude, you're going to be, uh, you're gonna be the, the, the Thane of Cotto or you're going uh, to be the king, you know, um, and uh, um, so, so he sells their uh, he sells their mystical qualities. Talks about how they just disappeared. And uh, um, so, if if uh, um, if you get a letter like this from your significant other, <laughs> but, um, like how how would how would you react? You get this uh, you get a text message at two a.m. Me? Sure. <laughs> that was like, I, it's crazy talk. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, was anybody here would be like. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to see their mental state in person. Yeah, what they call the uh, the insane route, and the thing that uh, um, that, that Banquo thinks happened. Hmm. Yeah, I don't. This has actually happened to me. No, <laughs> <laughs> My mom jumped out of a bush. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh, but wasn't magic and all that stuff considered to be just as real as religion was? I mean, they thought that religion was very, very, very real. So. So, so we're told this, right? And this is sort of a, um, um, and, and I'm sure you've learned it from a completely reliable source, and, and, and everybody slides on back to it. But um, as it turns out, the, 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 the way that we believe, the cultural conditions of belief change, so what we believe in can change a, a lot from culture to culture. But um, uh, it turns out that um, the sort of fervor that we believe with what we precise, what aspects we believe in, whether we can kind of consider it a symbolic set of guidelines in the background, or if you know, like we're good, like Pauline, you know, like you know, sell all of our things because the apocalypse is coming, and you know, like Jesus was resurrected, and, and nothing else matters. Uh, these are uh, more genetic dispositions, which would probably mean that there was probably roughly about as many true believers then as now. So you, you've got a sort of a sort of telling, and you see it in Shakespeare's characters. You know, like there's there's they're all they're all, you know, almost all of them are, are, are you know um, uh, Christian nominally, but you see a whole different spectrum of beliefs. And um, now I'm I'm saying this controversial controversially. There's a lot of people that have gone to school a lot longer than I have that 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 have you know they wrote these articles. They're very ingrained with it. They. They may well be right for all I know. My reading of the material and, and my understanding of the way that humans work say that probably, you know, as many people believe in fairies and witches then as they do now. There's more accepted part of uh, culture and discourse and stuff, you know, but um, yeah. Like your grandma? <laughs> like my grandma. Poor <laughs> grandma. <laughs> she makes really good collard greens. <laughs> you wouldn't think that you would like collard greens, but you would. So, um, <laughs> man, this is just a. See, it's because I'm like, I've got to get through all this material. I've really got to go down. It's nothing but digressions. <laughs> so, um, so, uh, and then, and then, uh, how does she react to it? Let's look. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe we should read this. Can I get a Lady Macbeth? All right, so start at, at, at Glanis and end with uh, Inter-Messenger. Glanis, 
thou art, and how do I? And shall be what thou art promised. Yet do I fear thy nature? It is too full of the milk of human kindness. To catch the nearest way, thou wouldst be great, art not without ambition, but without the illness should attend it. What thou wouldst highly, that wouldst thou wholly, wouldst not play false, and yet wouldst strongly win. Thou have great gladness. That which cries, thus thou must do, if thou have it. And that which rather thou dost fear to do, than wishes should be undone. I thee hither, that I may pour my spirits in thine ear, and chastise with the valor of my tongue all that impedes thee from the golden realm, which faith and metaphysical aid doth seem to have thee crowned with all. Thank you. So the, uh, the somebody want to give me the gist? I'll give myself the gist. So she gets the news. First of all, she completely believes it. Credulous creature that she is. Uh, secondly, you know, like her first thing is, yet I do fear thy nature. It's too full of the milk of human kindness. So the, the idea is that that, that uh, Macbeth is too too holy and, and too nice to uh, to take this opportunity and. Um, and, and, and get and this is this her, her first initial reaction. So um my 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 I what I want to ask is would Macbeth have predicted her to react this way? Why would Macbeth send that letter? Well in the history thing wouldn't in the history version he would have known that she was an heir, so I don't know, maybe he just wanted to see her opinion. So, I mean, maybe he would have okay, so so we'll we'll take out the history version. Just wants to see her opinion on it. Um, yes, sir. So she has time to unsex herself before his arrival. Right, right. So, uh, um, but but I guess what I'm getting at is 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 so they've been married, and we know that they're pretty happily married because uh, um, uh, Steve told us, and uh, um, Doctor Orzel, <laughs> you want to say something? I was going to say, it, it all seems like, you know, when you can't believe something is really true, then you have to go tell someone else to make it right, true. Right, right, right. So, so like, then somebody has to believe you. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. If the witch thing happened to me, I'm not sending that text. I'm not writing <laughs> that text. <laughs> you know, so um, unless, you know, like, a, 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 say, you know, um, there's a really nice jacket that you want. And you know you can't really afford it, right? And you know that it's the wrong decision, that you shouldn't buy the jacket. And you start asking people, you know, hey, you know, but it's, this is, and you start presenting the case, and you know, like, and then you like, you call your mom, and then your mom, because you know, like, she she knows stuff, and she's like, man, just buy the jacket, you know, you deserve it. And then all of a sudden, it's cool, right? So you're looking for somebody else to prod you, to give you the spur, as uh, as Macbeth would say. So um, I want to put out there the hypothetical possibility that uh, Macbeth knew damn well how she would respond to it, and that's why he sent it to her, because he knew that he didn't have the oats to, uh, um, to do it himself, but if, she got her, if he got her cooking, then that would get him cooking. So, um, so this is a, this is a uh, if he were, uh, you know, versed in, in, a, um, in a, uh, heuristics and, and rhetorical strategies, uh, this partial investment thing, is a good way to do it. So you start kind of picturing, you start imagining yourself with you know millions of dollars, or as the queen, and then uh, um, or as president, right? And then uh, um, and then you start actually investing, and then you get you get uh, uh, you know your acquisition bias because once you have something, it's worth a lot more than, than before you have it. So for example, um, uh, both uh, Mitt Romney and Daniel Crumbo lost the presidential election uh, of last year. But one of us is a lot more upset, right? <laughs> That's because he had invested all of this, this psychic time and energy imagining himself being president. So when he didn't get president, even though he, like I, never was president, it still felt loss, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so he's, he's setting it up so Lady Macbeth and she brings it up later. You know, like, why would you tell me this if, if you're not going to do it, right? So it, it's really... Uh, um, Again, I've got a, a great personal story, but I'm not going to do it. No, 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 no. Uh, look at that. Wrong card. 
So, um, and then, and then we've got the uh, um, the great unsexing thing, right? Come, you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts, unsex me here. And, oh no, let's let's go back. Let's go back. Sorry, jumped ahead. The wrong card threw me off. Uh, a couple of things I want you to notice from uh, the bottom of the of, of uh, what what uh, Abe read. Pour my spirits in thy ear. What does that What does that make remind us of? Those of us that have read Hamlet. I mean, pours the uh, poison in the ear was allegedly how the. Uh, um, and then uh, uh, she's got the valor. Remember valor from the uh, from the opening bloody man's description. It was, it was uh, um, Macbeth is Valor's minion against the female fortune. So she's got the valor of the tongue, and uh, um, and she wants to help along fate and metaphysical aid. Thou seem to have crowned with all. Um, so wants to help fate along. So uh, um, so Lady Macbeth, you'll notice, is uh, um, is on board as long as you're helping fate, al fate along. But when when Macbeth tries to change fate, that's when Lady Macbeth goes goes off. And uh, um, when, when things go from from uh, um, pretty disturbing to really effed up, so um, and then uh, uh, the other thing that, that that I want to pay attention to, we go up a little bit. So so uh, she says, yet I do fear thy nature is too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way. Thou wouldst be great, art not without ambition, but without the illness. Circle illness should attend it. Also circle kindness. But thou wouldest highly, thou wouldest thou holily, wouldest not play false, and yet wouldest wrongly win. So um, we were talking about psychotics, and uh, um, and even just evil. Forget about forget about the sort of medical diagnosis. So um, her values, to me, don't seem that 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 messed up, because. She calls kindness kindness. She calls what she wants, what she's proposing, illness. Right? Her, her, her value system's not. And, and, and then sort of condemns him for, for acting holily, doing the right thing holily. But, but if she's evil, you're not going to look at doing the right thing as being holy. It's going to be wussy, right? And so, uh, um, and, and, you know, like as, as uh, because her, her, her tune about it changes when she knows he's listening, right? And she wouldn't say, you're acting too holy. She'd say, you're, you're, you're being a weenie, you know, like, get a pair, you know, almost, almost exactly. And uh, um, so this is, this is weird to me because this is not the rantings of someone with, a, a, you know, an inverted value order. This is not somebody that's divorced from the social norm. This is not, this, she's fully immersed in the social norm. And then the, the unsex me, the unsex me thing. Come you spirits and ten, that tend on mortal thoughts. Unsex me here and fill me from the crown to the toe, top full of direst cruelty. So why does she need to do this if she's evil? Like she's she's uh, uh, she's she's suppressing something or something, right? She she needs to flood the feeling out of her. She's not unfeeling and cold and heartless and psychotic. She hates that she's not. You know, and and, and uh, we used to call this penis envy. You know, but uh, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, I think we should just call it Macbeth envy. But she's really, for probably some some uh, you know compelling re you know reasons, if we could get into her uh, if we could get into her case file, you know she really just wants to you know crush her emotions, you know, and and not because she doesn't have any, but probably because they're so and, and you know she's she's hyper emotional. She feels too much. She's she's crazy compassionate. All right. So, uh, and then, and then also when she she's committing the crime, you remember she has to uh, she has to get drunk to do it, right? So uh, again, you know, like uh, um, back when I was in a gang, we used to call this geeking yourself up to uh, to commit a crime that you didn't have the heart to otherwise, right? And uh, um, and then and then she fails, although she's able to clean up. So the question is this: Is Lady Macbeth a studio gangster? All that talk, woof, 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 comes down to it, and pees her pants and runs off to the corner. Sort of. She doesn't, she doesn't behave like the heartless psychopath that can sit there, and, 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 and she's not like the, the kind of person that will sit there and, you know, like cut a cat open and be like, oh, I'm like, you know, 
No, she's like, oh, maybe you're my dad. Or maybe not the cat, maybe so. All right, page 20. All right, Macbeth's uh, uh, wuss speech. If it were done when tis done, and twere well, it were done quickly. So, um, uh, this is actually this is actually true. My dad was a, a Navy SEAL, so growing up, I hung out with a lot of SEALs, and the only advice I remember them ever giving me was like, you know, he who hesitates is lost, and uh, uh, don't think, do. So you know, like I'm doing all this crazy stuff, you know, like, like rock climbing, going off waterfalls and kayaks and all this stuff that I would never do because if you think about it, you know, no rational person would do this nonsense. The idea is just to go for it, and, and Macbeth's trying to. So apparently, this this sort of masculine logic runs deep because Macbeth's doing it here. Uh, and then and then uh, uh, Macbeth kind of proves that this is true because he starts thinking about it, which he's prone to do. And what happens as soon as he starts thinking about it? Yeah, hesitates, just flat out talks himself out of it. There's no good reason. You don't have a rational argument here. Uh, you know, I have no spur. And then uh, Lady Macbeth's wonderful reply. <laughs> Can I get a new Lady Macbeth on the next page, 22? You know, reading uh, is a good way to, to get the, uh, to bring up the end of the participation points. So for those of you that, that uh, haven't yet embarrassed themselves. Starting from where? Uh, line 35. Was the hope drunk wherein you dressed yourself? Hath it slept since? And wakes it now to look so green and pale at what it did so freely? From this time such I count thy love. Art thou of I feared to be the same in thine own act and valor as thou art in desire. Wouldst thou have that which thou esteemest the ornament of life, and live a coward in thine own esteem, letting I dare not wait upon I would, like the poor cat in the adage? Prithee, peace! I dare do all that may become a man, who dares do more as none. What beast was then that made you break this enterprise to me, when you durst do it when you were a man? And to be more than what you were, you would be so much more than a man, nor time nor place that uh, did then adhere, and yet you would make both. Now have made themselves, and that their fitness now dost unmake you. I have given suck, and know how tender tis to love the babe that milks me. I would, while it was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from its boneless gums, and dashed the brains out, had I so sworn as you have done to this. Thank you. <laughs> As, uh, now I really like this because uh, Lady Macbeth uh, um, uh, really gets to the heart of the matter. Um, you know, calls him a wuss uh, and wakes it now to look so green and pale at what it did so freely. Now, um, he says sickly, and, um, and and you know conventionally people say that you're like hungover, but a green sickness is what she's really referring to. And green sickness was. Uh, uh, what they, they called it uh, when uh, um, virgins were getting married and when they were, when they were uh, dreading the uh, consummation of their wedding vows, it was called virgin green sickness because they would be thinking about it and, you know, like, uh, and become you know, green with, a, I don't know, disgust, whatever, whatever it is, allegedly. So he's, he, she's, she's calling him a, a little virgin girl. <coughs> That's cool. Uh, calls him a feared, calls him a coward. Uh, you know, questions is potency. Then you were a man. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, this is this is this is cool stuff, right? Um, and then and then uh, um, you know, one thing that I've learned in life is that as soon as you're verbally defending your manhood, you've already lost. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but uh, so, but but uh, the thing I want to look at in Lady Macbeth's reply to uh, to to Macbeth's wavering resolution is this, this whole buck up. So um, another thing that I've noticed about the giving and taking of advice is that uh, um, you know, we were talking about people who ask for advice. Now let's talk about people who give advice. And uh, I've noticed in my experience, I'm sure that it's just because I am myself am a derelict and deal with nothing but derelict, so you guys have probably had a completely different experience. But when people give me advice, they're always talking to themselves, even though they don't know it. You know, what they're doing is they're giving themselves advice and they're giving, they're telling them what they need to hear and 
oftentimes what they really do need to hear. But you know, like so they're they're talking to themselves at you, and so you're just like, hmm. So um, so uh, sure enough, Lady Macbeth is taking the whole logic from her unsex me speech, and now is 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 uh, giving it to Macbeth. Except for uh, he's he needs to get sexed. Um, <laughs> I, I can't prove I can't prove this this uh, uh, that everybody's giving advice to themselves scientifically, but I'll figure out a way. Um, so this is a uh, uh, and, and and then it of course it of course works right. So uh, and and, uh, and it seems like that she's pretty unsexed, but there's some weird things too. Um, the one thing is that uh, uh, this the famous I have given suck. And know how tender tis love the babe that milks me. So she's, she's so this good. We picture our little Freudian baby, right? <laughs> and then just on her own accord, just ah, <laughs> 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 uh, see, I can tell you guys don't have babies because you would have laughed. <laughs> I wonder if this can be used against me in the court of law. <laughs> <laughs> it was the perfect crime. <laughs> but uh, so it seems like a pretty horrific act, right? Can we uh, um, can we agree? So the um, and it's supposed to be right. What she's trying to do is uh, um, she's trying to like give the most horrific act that she can conceive of, right? And uh, this is called availability bias. So if I ask you the most horrific act you can conceive of on nine twelve. Uh, oh one, you know, what are you gonna, what are you gonna tell me? Something man eleven. Yeah, right. And uh, um, so uh, so what this tells me is that uh, um, she's been spending a lot of time thinking about nursing a baby. And uh, um, and 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 her horrific act par excellence is a dead baby. And so so um, but this means that uh, to me. Possibly, is that this is evidence that, that uh, she misses her baby really bad, and this is the thing that she's thinking about, and she's having a really hard time getting over this, and uh, and and maybe that's related to the feelings that she's always trying to crush, and she's just kind of doing a shotgun approach to emotion instead of dealing with her loss of her child. She's she's blaming her emotions rather than uh, rather than the situation. Poor lady Macbeth. But you know, like I said, Macbeth's in a pickle in either way because um, you know there's there's nothing there's nothing as pathetic as some guy explaining to you how manly he is. But um, no, really, man, you know, like 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 you know, I backed off, but you know, man, if I wasn't you know going for my knee, you know, it'd have been some different stuff. <laughs> Good thing we have this break coming up. <laughs> the point is that getting themselves to do this crime was no small thing. These aren't just you know like you know like uh, uh, Bonnie and Clyde that just sort of knowingly look at each other and go in and handle business, right? This is this this is requiring a lot of complex emotional buildup and mutual prodding. Uh, they both seem to know themselves and each other very well. Now. Uh, um, Neither thinks that their own will, or for Lady Macbeth her nature, and, or her sex, will be sufficient to prompt them to act. Instead, they create a situation that causes them to react to each other and to the circumstances in a way that they couldn't muster by sheer willpower. So they're doing a great, they're prodding each other to setting off a chain of events, so they prod each other into committing the act, because neither one of them can just, can just do it. So, um, we call these uh, uh, Ulysses contracts. Anybody familiar with the concept of a Ulysses contract? Right, the uh, prototype Ulysses contract is uh, um, they were going by the sirens that have this uh, incredible song, right? They're on the ship and the, the sirens are, and they have this song that's so good, the music is so dope that when you hear it, you, you sail to them and you run up on the rocks and you crash and you die. It's really, really good music. The problem is, is that so. So what he does is he he uh, he he sticks a bunch of wax in his crew's ears, and then ties himself to the mast, 
and then commands them to not listen to him no matter what and to go within hearing distance of the siren so he can hear the song and yet not everybody die. So this is a Ulysses contract, knowing that you cannot trust yourself in the clutch, but creating a situation that will make it so you have to. So, uh, what's that? <laughs> right. So uh, the, the, the classic example is these, um, the, uh, the Christmas accounts that banks used to do. They just had this, this really stupid idea that anybody that knows anything about finance would just think was idiotic and nobody would go for it. The idea was that you'd put money into an account all year long and then, and then uh, you couldn't have access to it without a heavy penalty until December and then you could use the money to buy presents, right? Because you can't trust yourself to save up for December. Now, this is really stupid to do if you're, if you're a banking customer because there's, you can put it in an you know, a, a interest accruing account so you can invest it. And you know, like it's way better just to just to you know behave rationally. But people don't trust themselves. They know that they're gonna like buy stuff all year and be broke on Christmas. So this turned out to be this really really successful thing, uh, and a tribute to uh, human stupidity. I probably would have done it. But um, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, so this is something. If they're you know like creating this this sort of mutual mutual prodding you know Ulysses contract to get themselves in a position to where there's no going back. That's a lot of things. But I don't think it's you know uh, psychotic, per se. Maybe am I building a case slowly a little bit? All right, let's go to the murder. Two two page twenty seven. Lady Macbeth's drunk. She whistles out. He looks like Daddy. But they're in trouble now. I mean, they're already broken in. So so uh, as per the situation dictates, you know. Uh, so, so, so Macbeth goes and, and hath done the deed. Came through, came through when, uh, when he needed to. But he's going around, not like a psychotic, you know, like, this is a sorry sight, Lady Macbeth. A foolish thought to say a sorry sight. And uh, um, so uh, consider it not so deeply. These, de these deeds must not be thought of after these ways, so it will make us mad. This is Lady Macbeth speaking. So what's Lady Macbeth's advice about it? Don't, do don't think about it. She's a hypocrite. <laughs> she's not one to talk. She couldn't even do it herself. I don't know. She's 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 a. Uh, <laughs> and then and then uh, um and then and then Macbeth starts whining. And this is another dynamic of their relationship. When when Macbeth acts unmanly, mm -hmm. she picks up the slap, right? So you know when she's at her most hardcore is when Macbeth is failing, and and when when Macbeth isn't failing, she just just becomes you know. Uh, just, just kind of a flat-out hysterical schoolgirl, huh? But, um, but to me, uh, Lady Macbeth's advice shows that again that this is her strategy in in relating to losses. Uh, it might be a good advice. I don't know when 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 something horrible happens. I mean, what's the uh, like like how would you deal with a catastrophe? Like, what's your what's your what's your strategy? <laughs> yeah, so panic, but then you're in grief, you know, are you from the school of, because there's two schools of thought, right? There's the, uh, uh, don't think about it, and then there's the wallow in it, right? And, uh, and you rolled your eyes, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah? I'll make a decision about how bad the situation is. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of, like, there's, um, kind of like a joke or a joke or whatever, I don't know. Basically, a guy goes to the doctor and goes, every time I walk, Yeah. So, uh, um, the, in the clinical data, I, I like that you're using jokes as examples. I want to encourage everyone to do that. The, but, um, you know, they, they used to think that you're not supposed to repress traumatic memories, but then it turns out that you can't. Sorry for those of you that learned otherwise. There's no such thing as repressed traumatic memories. Um, uh, but at the same time, you know, like thinking about stuff. Then they used to think, well, just write about it, and then you, you'll, you'll organize it into narrative meaning coherence, and you'll get better. Well, that doesn't always work. Sometimes people just get lost in their, lost in their little traumatic narrative. So her advice might be right. I don't think it works for her, though, right? <laughs> like she, doesn't seem, she seems to be like the least capable person ever of getting over things. <laughs> so uh, let's go to 3, 2, 4, 14. We got we to gotta cook. Uh, page 46. 
All right, so uh, um, so uh, she's 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 lamenting about getting what she wanted and how that just made things worse. Oh, tragic irony. Um, but again, bucks up when Macbeth enters and uh, um, repeats her "stop thinking about it" mantra. And but also, you know, like she's she's pretty she's pretty clear about this. You know, she says on uh, line thirty-five, "You must leave this." You know, like what's done is done, but do no more, right? So she's she's officially off board. And uh, um, again, the Macbeths don't get into real trouble until they start trying to change the prophecies. But um, but after they leave this, you know, she's she's uh, she's demasted by that, right? Macbeth just treats her like a, you know like the way that that, that a, a Scottish king is supposed to treat his wife. Don't worry about it; I'll take care of it. You know, and you can you can show up to the victory party. But uh, all right, so let's go to the the, the dinner scene. Fast, 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 fast. Uh, lo love the dinner scene. Um, depending on how you play it, you can play it different ways. Obviously, so this is this is this is when uh, um, uh, Macbeth has the meltdown in front of in front of all the dinner guests. It's, uh, uh, I call it pulling a crumbo. But uh, and then so if you play it so so like like Polanski did, where uh, uh, Lady Macbeth comes and whispering to him. I prefer just the really super uncomfortable version of her yelling. All these flaws and starts and posture to true fear would well become a woman's story at a winner's file. You know, and he's calling him a, you know, calling him a little girl in front of all company. You know, this really awkward girl's <laughs> bat, you know, like, be a man! You know, this is like, <laughs> this is Macbeth, the baddest ass on the, on the planet, right? But, um, but uh, you know, I, I, I think that uh, this works a lot like the play within a play. Of, uh, of, of Hamlet, for those of you familiar with Hamlet. So in, in Hamlet, he stages a play within a play that, that stages the murder as was told to him by the ghost of the father, and then he was going to watch how, how uh, um, the, the murdering king reacted to it. But here, you know, uh, Macbeth and Lady Macbeth play themselves, <coughs> and sort of, you know, sort of a, a you know, uh, out, out, I guess I have that Macbeth comes out of the crazy closet. <laughs> And, let, and lets everybody know what was really going on during those silent raptures, and um, and and so that's funny. But we have to we have to keep going. Sixty six. So this is where uh, um, this is where he, he finds out that everything is going completely to to putt, and uh, um, Macduff has fled to England. And uh, um, so we're on four one one forty four, and um, so so he's he's upset about this, and then he says, "From this moment, the very firstlings of my heart shall be the firstlings of my hand, and even now to crown my thoughts with acts. Be it thought and done, be it thought and done." So um, his solution to this, as he figures that the problem he's in now, was because he's been thinking too much. He sort of <laughs> internalized the Lady Macbeth logic. Now, you and I might think, no, Macbeth, this isn't because you've been thinking too much. <laughs> but no, he's, 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 he's going strict with this, so now he wants to, uh, you, know, you know, thought and act is one. So, so, I mean, he's blaming himself because he should have killed Macduff as soon as he had the idea to, and he waited, and now everything's gone to putt. So uh, he just banishes thought altogether. And um, so his solution is just to act immediately off of impulse. Mark that passage. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go back to 34 just to remember something, which is 2394. Ah! All right, so um, this is when Macbeth discovers that, that, uh, uh, that Duncan's been killed, his, his public admission of what happens. He says, for from this instant, there's nothing serious in mortality. All is but toys. Renown and grace is dead. The wine of life is drawn, and the mere lees has left this vault to brag of. So um, what he's saying is that because the, 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 the king is dead, and uh, um, because such a thing could be done, that life is actually meaningless, because the whole divine great chain of being order that's, you know, like the, the, that constitutes the whole world picture can be violated. Just the fact that the king can be murdered in this way shows that life has no meaning. It's just all a big farce. And, um, and, and this is, you know, most people play this as uh, um, he's just being uh, uh, hypocritical, right? He's, he's putting on a face, and he really doesn't believe it. But he seems to really believe it, and he seems to take this to heart, and he behaves as if life has no meaning after this. And then 
we get to the famous 5-5, five, five, page 90. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, I'm going to read it aloud. This is the, the queen dies, and uh, he gets the news. She should have died hereafter. There would have been a time for such a word, tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Creeps in this petty place from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusky death, dusty death, rather. Out, out, brief candle. Life's but a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Now, um, I had the uh, great experience of when I was an undergrad, our, uh, um, our teacher made everyone in the class memorize this. And so for two class periods, we just heard this over and over and over and over and over again. And I'm telling you right now, it is effed up. And it will, if you spend too much time on this, it will get to you. It seems kind of corny and gloss over it, but when you start prying it apart and you hear it over and over again, this is, this is the thing that drives people who study Macbeth. I mean, literally, people go crazy studying Macbeth. But, um, so, you know, the, the, the tomorrow, you know, like think about everything that tomorrow is supposed to solve for you, right? It's, 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 it's promised everything, but, but that's just somebody else's yesterday and they're all dead. And, you know, nothing means anything. This is his ultimate justification for acting is that life is completely meaningless. You know, sometimes famous quotes are famous for a good reason. But um, this, I think, is why the play really is terrible, even though it's over the top and cartoonish at points and, 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 you know, like really kind of silly and slapstick. Now that the real tragedy is that even tragedy is stupid and pointless and meaningless, right? And uh, uh, it doesn't have dignity, and, and, and it's, just, it's just meaningless. It's all meaningless. And, uh, and I don't want to dwell on it right at a time. So I'm not going to, yeah, I am. Uh, this, this last, the, the uh, quiz that you had today will not, the material will not be on the test. Yeah? Um, on the test, is it like, if you're broken up by each play, and they're all like mixed together? 